What's up, everyone? I hope you all enjoyed the B-roll from George Rogers Park in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Now I'm back at Deuces in Beaverton to play some 1-2 cash game. There's of course going to be plenty of straddling and mixed game action as well. Very excited to share this episode with you. There's some pretty wild hands in this one, so without further ado, let's get into it. I've compiled two separate sessions in this vlog. Let's dive into the first one. Here I look down at King Queen offsuit on the button. There's a couple of limps from the undergun and middle position players before the low jack raises to 15. The cutoff calls, and I'm going to take the aggressive route here in position. I three bet to 50. Action falls back to the low jack who makes the call. Cutoff gets out of the way. We go heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace, jack five with two hearts, and the low jack checks to me. This is a great board for my three betting range. However, I know this player tends to play pretty tight, so it's pretty likely that they have an ace or a jack and will look me up if I see bet. I decide to check back, see if the turn brings some good bluffing opportunities. The turn is the ace of hearts, which is an interesting card. It makes it less likely that my opponent has an ace, but it also puts a heart flush on the board. I'm not sure if this is the card I was looking for, but when the low jack checks for a second time, that's the green light for me to start firing. I bet 75 and the low jack pretty quickly folds pocket tens. Happy to get this one through and pick up the pot. In this one, I peel queen nine suited in middle position. There's a limb from under the gun. I make it 15 to go. The button, big blind and under the gun make the call. We go four ways to a flop of four king eight with two spades and action checks to me. I could try and rep ace king, king queen, but I'm not super comfortable betting into three other players with queen high. I check and the button checks as well. Still four ways to the turn, which comes the ace of hearts, giving me a flush draw. Action checks to under the gun who bets 18 bucks. This card is great for my range and improves my hand. So I think this is a spot where the best play is probably to raise and put pressure on my opponent. But I decide to just call here. The button folds and the big blind comes along. Three ways to the river, which comes the deuce of diamonds, a complete break. I expected under the gun to bet again on this card, which seemingly changes nothing, but I'm surprised to see them check. They could be trying to induce a bluff, and if that's the case, well, I'm happy to oblige here with queen high. I'm going to bet 80, close my eyes and hope it goes through. The big blind folds and under the gun folds. Phew. I don't think this is a good bluff to be honest, but hey, chips are being pushed my way and I'm not going to complain about that. For the last end of this first session, we're going to play a Dramaha 49 Bomb Pot. Quick little recap, in this game you get dealt 5 cards, you use 2 cards to make the best Omaha hand on the board, and you add up the numerical value of your cards to get as close as possible to 49. You can draw up to 3 cards after the flop, the game is called 49 because that's the best hand you can have with 4 10s and 1 9 in your hand. All right, so six of us see a flop of queen five three rainbow and I look down at ace eight four three three So I flop a set of threes and my count is currently 19, which is pretty much trash The hijack bets 20 and you'll notice my stack has gone down quite a bit That's because I've been raising and whiffing Calling and missing and by now I fear a little bit of tilt has settled in I go ahead and make the call and so does the small blind now comes draw time the small blind draws two Hijack stands pat, which would indicate that they have a good 49 hand. I hold on to my set of 3s and the 8, and I draw 2. The dealer flips over the turn card, which is the queen of spades, improving my hand to a boat. This is a good card for me because it makes it less likely that someone had a set of queens, so the only hand that realistically beats me is pocket 5s. I also draw a jack and a 7, but these don't really matter as by holding on to my 3s, I'm pretty much giving up on the 49 half of the pot. The small blind checks, the hijack bets 65, and uh, this is where I go full tilt and raise all in for 146, fully aware that I'm never getting the hijack to fold after they stood pat. The small blind folds and the hijack unsurprisingly makes the call. We flip over our cards and I'm happy to see that my boat is good as the hijack has a count of 37, including three nines in their hand. I'm happy until the dealer turns over a third freaking queen my full house gets counterfeited, the hijack scoops the pot, I decide to cut the bleeding and head home. Fast forward to the following week and uh, I apologize for the filming here, I literally just sat down and bought in for 400 bucks when I get involved in a Dramaha bomb pot. So once again we get dealt 5 cards, 
we use two to make the best Omaha hand on the board. And uh, in regular Dramaha, we try to make the best five card poker hand down and players can draw up to three cards after the flop. So here I'm in middle position and I get dealt ace, ace, 10, six, four, and the flop comes five, ace, four, rainbow. I flop top set and I currently have a pair of aces down. Action checks to me and I think my hand is good enough for a bet of 10 bucks and I get calls from the cutoff, button and under the gun players. Time to draw. Big blind draws two, under the gun draws one, which is a little concerning. Looks like they might be drawing to a flush, straight or a full house. I draw three and so does the cutoff. Dealer flips over the turn, which comes to 10 of hearts, and I draw two sevens and a four, including the seven of hearts. So I improve to two pair down, aces and sevens, but I also pick up the nut flush draw on top of my top set. Action checks to me again, and this time I bet 50, and the cutoff goes all in for 119. Big blind folds, and the under the gun player sticks their last 19 bucks in the middle. I make the call. The river is the queen of hearts giving me the nut flush. Cutoff seems unhappy about the situation, and it's understandable as they flopped the straight with deuce three and rivered the second nut flush with king three of hearts. My nut flush is going to win the Omaha hand, and it looks like my two pair down is good. I scoop a nice spot on my very first hand at the table. Let's go. In this one, we're back to hold them and the $5 button straddle is on. I look down at knight eight suited from under the gun and the big blind raises to 12 bucks. I've been drinking a bit. I've got courage juice flowing through my veins and for some reason, I decide that I'm going to take down this pot no matter what. I start by three betting to 45. The cutoff cold calls and the big blind comes along. We go three ways to a flop of ace, five, queen, rainbow. A perfect hand for my three betting range, I think to myself. So when the big blind checks to me, I fire a second bullet for 70 bucks, just about half pot. Cutoff gets out of the way. Action is back on the big blind and they're visibly hesitant. I don't think they're Hollywooding. They genuinely seem uncertain between calling and folding, it seems. I'd be down with a fold, but ultimately they make the call. The turn brings another queen and opens up a flush draw. The big blind checks to me again. I look over at their stack and it looks like they have about 180 behind. Like I said, I was set on taking this pop down preflop, so I follow along with the plan, put max pressure on my opponent and put them all in. So yeah, this is new territory for me, all in with nine high. I try to keep it cool on the outside, but inside I'm going, please fold, please fold, please flash, ah, shit, they make the call, I hate my life. We go to the river, which comes to eight of hearts, pairing me up, but there's no way I'm good here, right? Right? I don't believe it. My opponent flips over Jack 10 of spades for a busted flush and a gut shot straight draw. They were actually ahead with Jack high, but the eight bails me out and I win a 600 plus dollar pot with third pair. What the hell just happened? Next hand, we're back on the drama hut streets. Five players, including myself, see a flop of queen jack four rainbow and I look down at Jack 10, 8, 8, 7. I flop a pair of Jacks, and right now I have a pair of eights down. Action checks around and we go to draw time. My draw hand is kind of weird because I have a pair, but I also have some flush and straight draws and those hands stand a better chance of winning half the pot. For that reason, I decide to let go of my non-diamond eight and the seven. As I'm picking up my cards, the dealer flips over the queen of clubs on the turn, and the first card I draw is a queen giving me top boat on the board, queens full of jacks, and the second card is a nine giving me a queen high straight in my hand. I have the nuts on the board, I have a super strong hand down, I think this calls for a mega, mega. I've been playing Dramaha for a couple of years now and I can tell you this pot does not come very often where you're almost guaranteed to scoop the entire pot. Back to the action, the under the gun player bets 15 and this is where the hand takes a weird turn. Check this out. I probably got nut nut. I have, wait, I'm not all in. Oh shit, I thought you were all in. So yeah, for some dumb reason, I assumed they were all in when in fact they have close to 450 bucks behind. They did not look at my cards when I flipped them over, so we decide to continue playing the hand. 
The river comes the Jack of Hearts, which doesn't change much. The small blank checks, and I guess I'm going to try and extract some value from my hand. I sheepishly throw out 25 bucks, and I'm surprised to see the under the gun player call. I obviously scoop the pot, but this is where this mistake turned out to be the single biggest one I've ever made in my poker journey. Under the gun player was holding the case queen and the four, so they also had a boat on the board. As it turns out, had the hand played normally, I would have most likely raised their bet on the turn. They would have re-raised to try and push me out of the pot. Basically, we would have been all in on the turn or the river, and I would have scooped a pot of close to a thousand bucks, booking my first thousand plus win for the vlog. But no, I just had to fuck things up. Stupid idiot. I scooped the pot, but this very much still feels like a loss. I'm not gonna lie, this one still hurts a little bit. What's the biggest fuck up you've ever done at the poker table? Please let me know in the comments. Make me feel a little better. I would very much appreciate it. This brings us to the last hand of the session. In this one, we're going to play Dramaha Zero. Works the same as Dramaha 49, except in this case, you're trying to get the lowest score possible. And that's generally achieved by picking up face cards, which are worth zero. Aces are worth one, deuces are worth two, and so forth. I start off with 8666 deuce, which gives me a trash count of 28, but the flop comes 8 deuce 8 with two diamonds. I flop top boat. Kind of a similar situation to the 49 hand from the previous week. I flop strong on the board, but my draw hand is not shipping up to be a winner. The small blind bets 15. I'm the only player to make the call as we had to draw time. The small blind stands pat. Hmm, this feels familiar. I'm going to hold on to 8 deuce and draw 3. The turn comes a jack of clubs and I draw a queen, 10 and an ace giving me a count of 21 which is still a trash count. The small blind bets 25 and even though I got no claim to the draw hand, I go ahead and make the call. The river is another jack and this is where things get interesting. The small blind now goes all in for 105 and alarms go off in my head. I don't feel good about the situation, but I still want to give this some thought. My opponent stood pat, so they probably have a very strong zero hand, which means their hand is mostly made off face cards. Since there's two eights on the board and I'm holding one, it's unlikely my opponent has one, especially after standing pat. So literally the only hand I lose to is jack deuce, but there's two jacks on the board. Even if my opponent has a jack, what are the chances that they also have a deuce? I decide that it's unlikely enough to warrant a call and fight for my half of the pot. I show my hand and of course, of course, they show jack deuce and a count of three. Just like last week, I get runner runnered and my opponent scoops the pot. Nice hand, sir. Thankfully, this was the actual last hand of the session, so I didn't get a chance to lose more chips. I'm still thinking about the 1k stack I could have had, but instead cash out for 590. And there you have it, one of the weirdest hands I ever played and the biggest mistake I ever made at the poker table, all in one vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I would really love it if you could hit that like button if you did. Don't hesitate to subscribe if you want to see more of my content. This supports me in growing the channel and I appreciate it so, so much. Thanks for watching, good luck at the tables, and see you in the next one!